Honor to introduce to you the chairman of this session. In his own right, before he deviated into another form of commerce in Nigeria, he was the first person I knew as a tax guru, as a chartered accountant. But I think today he wears a hat other than a tax practitioner, so we're going to rely on his wealth of experience. It's my honor to introduce Dr. Emmanuel Etoya Ijewele, a chartered accountant tax consultant as well as, I don't like the term farmer, agricultural expert. He is the chairman in six companies and director in three. He is past president of the Child Accountants of Nigeria. He is presently the president, the chairman of the body of past presidents of our institute. He is past president, accounting bodies of West Africa, Abwa. He is past president, Oyster directors, IOD. He is the past national president of the Nigeria Red Cross Society. He was chairman of the Staff Council of Region of International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. He was pioneer vice president, Chartered Institutionalization, CITN. He was chairman of the Value Added Tax Committee, the committee that created VAT in Nigeria. He was chairman of the Agricultural and Food Security Commission, that's of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group. He was chairman, community of agricultural stakeholders of Nigeria. He was chairman, extractive industry subcommittee of National Council on Privatization. He was member, technical committee on privatization of federal government companies and prostitutes. He was member, honorary international investment council under Baroness Linda Chalka. He was member, agricultural transformation implementation council, ATIC under our previous president, Good Luck Ebele Jonathan. He served as resource person on agriculture to the Buhari Transition Committee. He is currently the vice president of the Nigeria Agri-Business Group, the umbrella body for agri-business in Nigeria. He was past PTA chairman, Lagos State Model College, Badoe. He was chairman, Longman Nigeria PLC Book Publishing, now Learn Africa PLC. And to those of us, the second generation accountants, he somebody we intend and admire. You're welcome. When you have an issue on tax, I think it's important you get the facts right, you get the facts straight from the source, and you also have an, an opportunity to ask questions that you have for on tax. In Nigeria today, tax is becoming a major issue, both for corporates and personal. It's becoming the major income source for government. It had been that in Lagos State. It is becoming that in other states. It's becoming that at the federal level. It's my honor to introduce the lead presenter for today. I don't think what we have here can do justice, but I'll read it. Is Mr. Babatunde Fowler, Chairman Federal Indian Revenue Service. Mr. Babatunde Fowler is the Chairman of Federal Indian Revenue Service appointed by President Muhammad Buhari. He was formerly Executive Chairman of the Lagos State Board of Internal Revenue. He had had an earlier career in banking and he had worked and had, and had run various parts of banking operations and business development in two major commercial banks over the past. I think this is an error, plus 20 years. 
Upon leaving the banking industry in 2004, Mr. Fowler joined the Lagos State Government and was appointed the pioneer permanent secretary, executive chairman of Lagos Department of Internal Revenue on the 24th of November 2005, thereby upgrading the office of the executive chairman to the highest level in the civil service. He has also pioneered several innovative strategies in tax. He has actually made the taxman people-friendly and somebody that you would like to associate with. One, because of his panache, and secondly, because of his know-how. It's my honor to introduce to the high table, Mr. Baba Tunde Fowler, Executive Chairman, Federal Energy Service. You are welcome, sir. We have three discussants of the paper that is going to present. We have with us now Dr. Olumide Obayani, Department of Commercial and Industrial Law, University of Lagos. He's a senior lecturer at UNILAG and holds a first degree from the prestigious Bafnaolo University, Ileife. He also holds a Master's of Law degree from the University of Alberta School of Law, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, as well as a Master's of Law in Taxation from Golden Gate University School of Law, San Francisco, California. He is admitted to the bars of the State of California and the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He holds a doctorate juris in International Legal Studies from Golden Gate University School of Law, California, 2007. He has worked at the Monterey College of Law, Monterey, Roman and Singh LL Limited Liability Partnership, Fremont, East Bay Law School, Oakland, USA, the Law Office of Olympia Bayemi, Oakland, all in California, as well as at Jumugobia and Okiki, he has rendered tax advisory services to several blue chip companies. It's my honor to invite to the days Dr. Olumide Obayemi. A round of applause for him, please. It's my honor to introduce Mr. Tayo Oyedele FCA, Partner Tax and Corporate Advisory Services in the global firm of PricewaterhouseCoopers. Mr. Tayo Oyedele is an author, a public speaker, and thought leader on business governance and economic matters. He is a member of the Ministerial Committee on the Implementation of Nigeria's National Tax Policy and a member of the Working Group on Voluntary Assets and Income Declaration Scheme. He is a contributor to the Annual Green Business Report of the World Bank, which compares the relative ease of green business in 190 economies worldwide. He is Chairman of the Taxation and Fiscal Policy Management Board of ICANN, member of the Nigerian Tax Standards Board, and previously served on the ACCA Global Governing Council for six years. He's also a member of the PwC Global Board for Leadership Development. It's my honor to introduce and ask to come to the days Mr. Taiwo Oyedele FCA, Partner, Tax and Corporate Advisory Services, PwC. It's my honor to introduce to us Mr. Ruben Owaru, CPA, Manager, Public Finance Management, Pan-African Tradition of Accountants, PAFA. Mr. Ruben Owaru joined PAFA on the 1st of March 2018 as a manager in charge of Public Finance Management, PFM. Prior to this, Ruben was management consultant at PricewaterhouseCoopers Kenya, focusing on public sector clients and development partners. Ruben holds a Bachelor of Commerce degree, Accounting and Finance from Strathmore University, Nairobi. He's also a certified public accountant and a member of East of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya. ICPAK. It's my honor to introduce him and ask him to come to the days. At this stage, I'd like to hand over proceedings to Chief Emmanuel Njewe. Thank you very much. The President, Institute of the Conference of Nigeria, the Vice President, the first Vice President and the second Vice President. Past Presidents here, and I'm glad to say that there are two groups of past Presidents. The ones that are senior to me, I dub my hat. For those who are following me, I say keep the raise up. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, when I do write, any top government official, including senators, and it's a very serious issue 
on which I feel very strongly, I attach to it the kind of tax clearance certificate that Mr. Fowler created in Lagos State. I send it to them because I'm proud that I have a right to challenge you because I've paid my taxes. And if you are in this hall, you should try to do that yourself, believe in that yourself and do the right thing. Because from my, the time I was in my previous world of tax practice, I observed that it's only a small group of people that were paying the taxes. And many of these people were forced to ensure, were made to ensure that they paid the right taxes because the concentration was on them. But when this government came on board and they appointed the tax guru of Lagos, who had exemplified himself in the act of ensuring you pay correct taxes, Mr. Fowler has said something new is going to happen. And a lot has happened. It's not a perfect situation yet, but we started on the right road. Bringing this subject up for discussion today and bringing taxation to the fore for all of us to discuss the principles of taxation have to be fully understood and then respected. We will not spend time and energy discussing issues that are outside what Mr. Fowler, who is the lead paper presenter, will be discussing. His job is to look at the law and collect the taxes as provided by law. How the money is spent is outside his core view. If you as chartered accountants and citizens of Nigeria don't care how that money is spent, then go back and, call and return your certificates. For the other side of it, you will discover that the other discussions are on the other side. In other words, there are two opposing sectors in the tax practice, tax, taxation in Nigeria. You have the administrator led by Mr. Fowler and you have this young, three young, vibrant, innovative and original persons here today to talk on behalf of the taxpayers as well as Nigeria as a nation. That does not in any way allow you to abdicate all the responsibilities of the discussion today to just these four people seated here. You need to ask yourself questions and anywhere you need a clarification, do not hesitate to raise up your hand and ask a direct question on how we can effectively collect taxes in our country. Ladies and gentlemen, with that introduction, I invite Mr. Fowler, who, when he speaks taxation, you know the authority is speaking. And I told him and I warned him that these young people here have notes as he's talking. They are going to discuss his paper, tear it into bits. And that is on our behalf. I would like to please come forward and say the next thing. The President of Council, another Council Member Chair President, present, the Chairman of the Session, my distinguished colleagues, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the press. I'm extremely delighted to be here today to talk to this paper on tax justice, expanding the frontiers of public finance. I am going to talk to this paper and I'm going to skip a few points because I'm sure that we all understand the issue of taxation. 
we are all quite aware that also for any country to have effective development, both in terms of uh, social and economic development, funding is required. And I'm going to go through a few um, issues, first of all. But let me first of all thank the Chairman for that wonderful introduction, which has helped me to put things in the right perspective. Without taxation, we cannot talk about development. Africa, as a continent, is set to host 30% of the world's natural resources, but still remains the poorest continent. The Agenda 2063, the AU claims that by then we should be in a position to fund our respective budgets. And my position clearly is that I don't think the developed world will continue to carry us. We have to be able to develop our country ourselves. So even if we choose the best leader, the best leader without resources cannot bring anything to, to be apart from having a vision which will end up being a dream. So it depends on you and I to make sure that we can fund our nation and bring about that development. I'm going to be looking at what is tax justice in public finance, why is tax justice important to public finance, and the initiatives undertaken by the FIRS to expand the frontiers in public finance in Nigeria, and also give you an idea of where we are to date. However, I would also like to point out that Revenue collected by the FIRS is divided into two. We have what we call the Federation accounts and others. The amount collected in the Federation account is shared at FAC between the three tiers of government. And that simply means that in any month that we don't collect adequate revenue, that means the federal, state, and local governments do not have enough revenue to carry out the expected responsibilities. And of course, you know what that uh, would lead to. When we're talking about tax justice, I'm not a lawyer, but I'll try and be define it the best way possible. It's a fair system of taxing. Simply put, a fair system of taxing. Meaning that as tax administrators, we're not expect you to pay more tax than you should. And you, as taxpayers, we expect you to pay your taxes as as when due. On the part of the tax administrator, we'll try and make it convenient. We'll certainly be held accountable and give you all the information that you require, plus all the education that you require to ensure that you can carry out your own side of the deal. I was very happy when the chairman pointed out our responsibility is not to spend the money or to question how the money is being spent. You and I elected officials that carry out that executive function of spending the tax revenue. So I think we should leave it as that. Looking at how tax justice and public finance relate, if you look at this, the screen there, basically tax provides the government's income, and of course, with the government expenditure, shows the public finance. Now, how it is collected is one issue. And we at FIRS have adopted a new system. We do not believe in what we call armchair tax administration. We meet with stakeholders on a regular basis. We try and explain our vision try and explain the process that we have introduced and after we find out that if for any reason we hit a roadblock, then we come out with what we call the enforcement um, aspects. And I'll talk about some certain things that we have put into place and why we have to take those measures. Now in terms of how it is spent, I'm not going to talk too much on that, although that is part of the model. But considering the fact that well, we can, we can hold ourselves accountable 
as to how to dispense based on who we decide to vote into office. Now, why is tax important? This is an aspect that I didn't think that I already have to discuss here because all of us as accountants, except me, um, clearly understand why tax is important to public uh, finance. Uh, if we look at any developed country, the developed countries across the world, either um, or people classify them as developed because of the level of industrialization or in terms of standard of living or conveniences. Basically, the tax to GDP ratios are in the high 30s. Africa as a continent has an average of about 17%. I won't even talk about where Nigeria stands, because it's too bad to even mention. But if everyone plays their part, I am sure we should be able to hit the early 20s in the next 12 to 18 months. And some of you might wonder how, and I'll give you certain information that will tell you how we can do it together. Like I said, um, I'm going to jump a few pages because all of us here basically know on the need for uh, tax payments. Now also, in terms of issues that we need to consider, there's a need for diversification of the economy and the growth of the non-oil revenue sector. Clearly, if we look at what makes up our GDP, in terms of percentages, all plays a very, very minor role. Granted, oil used to provide a lot of the foreign exchange that was required so much, but in terms of employment, in terms of tax revenue to, to government, it actually is not as important as most of us had thought. Um, over the last three years, the tax revenue of, from the non-oil sector actually exceeds the oil uh, sector. On an average, currently 62% of tax revenue is from the non-oil sector. And I believe that it will continue to grow. And I can easily estimate that in the next 18 months, it should account for about 8% of total tax revenue. We do have the same problems that most other countries have with taxing the informal sector. And I'll also tell you the strategies that we intend to put in place. We also have issues of cash-based transactions, just like any other country. But those countries have taken strategies and put it in, in place um, actions that will also capture those um, expenditures and also make sure that they're taxed. When we're talking about taxation, the different ways that we as tax abusers um, determine the amount of tax based on best of judgment, which is not ideal. We can look at your expenditure profile. We can look at the value and number of assets that you have acquired. And of course, put in figures. But as accountants, you play a very vital role. And I tell people, as accountants, you're the ones that actually measure the true economic well-being of any country. You can decide, and in your presentation, you can say the glass is half empty or half full. Depending on how you present it is how decisions would be made. And I've called on my colleagues in this business of tax administration on both sides. And quite frankly, I believe that if we share the same vision, we should actually be on the same side. You represent clients that give you data, and based on your knowledge, you know that that data does not add up, or does not seem real, but you still represent them. Now, when you represent them with data that is not real, of course you cannot get a real or accurate tax computation. Now, in terms of the initiatives that we've done, first of all, to expand the frontiers of public finance, we've introduced e-services. 
And with these e-services, you can actually carry out all tax activities without visiting the tax office or without having contact with any tax administrator. We have what we call the e-registration, whereby for new companies, you can register your company and also pay whatever stamp duties are required online. You have the e-filing, you have the e-payments. You can make your tax payments anywhere in the world 24-7. And once you have given an uh, email address, you'll be given a notification of any payments on your tax ID and can download and print your receipts at home and also verify that receipts immediately. You can also apply for your tax payment certificates online. And once all conditions have been met, you can also print it out yourself. You can also pay for your stamp duties online. Uh, these are innovations that we had introduced as far back as uh, we started in 2016, and basically all were in place early this year as a group in 2018. We also do have a lot of cooperation with other government agencies in terms of information gathering, also with the Office of the Accountant General. We looked at tax, and we're talking about tax justice. So we're not only asking the private sector to pay their taxes, also asking the public sector to meet their taxes. So we, what we did is that we deployed systems free of charge to all state governments in the Federation to ensure that they also remit taxes that are due to the Federation accounts timely. And where they do not, we're in the process of deducting those taxes at source to make sure that they also contribute the correct amount of taxes to the general pot. If we look at our collection in 2018, you might not be able to read this, this slide, but just to give you some indication as to how, not how well we have done, but how far we have got in 2018, and also we'll compare that to the performance in 2017. Under the Federation account, we've accused about 82% of budget while under the other accounts, 70%. The main tax that comes under other income is VAT. VAT happens to be the fastest growing tax type in the world, and even the UAE has introduced VAT for the first time. So if countries that have been able to show and achieve so much development in such a short time, I don't know how many of you have ever have been to Dubai 25 years ago and have been to Dubai of recent. You see quite, quite massive changes, not only in the infrastructure, but in terms of those locations being choice locations for conferences and other business activities. This also shows the growth in stamp duties. Um, a lot of people have started taking advantage of the East Stamp Duty platform. And for those who are still afraid of technology, we have not abandoned totally the manual system. Prior to now, um, we did have some challenges for those who wanted to use the manual system. We had about 14 outdated stamp duty machines. So that, that simply meant that if you wanted to stamp a document, sometimes you might have to travel from one state to another. Now we imported over 100 brand new stamp duty machines. So some states have over five stamp duty machines and as required. But that has also positively um, affected the uh, revenue growth in the area of stamp duty. And just as a word of caution, it is very simple to pay the stamp duty. Um, literally, it shouldn't take you more than five minutes if you decide to use the manual process of going into a tax office by FIRS. And of course, if you want to do it online, you can actually do it in the comfort of your home or anywhere you want, anywhere in the world. And if you eventually want to have it physically on that document, you also just take it into an FIRS office. Between 2015 and 2017, it shows VAT has grown by 25%, which 
on the onset looking at the graph looks quite impressive. But when we look at the true potential of VAT in the country, quite frankly, it's not good enough. Um, we had found out that a lot of people collect VAT and do not remit that VAT, meaning that the money that you've been charged, that you, that you paid as VAT, has not got into government coffers, and as such, cannot be divided uh, among the states and the federal government. The states that are dying because of lack of revenue actually um, share 85% of VAT, while the federal government only takes 15%. We've now decided to go back to basics. We've issued new VAT certificates, which we expect to be hung up in all businesses that do collect VAT, so that any taxpayer will know that this organization has been registered for tax. And we also have uh, a promotion, which we'll be launching sometime this month, whereby if any consumer can give us 25 names of any business that does not have a VAT certificate or is not registered as a taxpayer, we'll give them a corporate item from a power bank for your, for your phone or anything of interest that, that you may like. The whole idea behind this is that we expect you to protect your VAT, protect the revenue you pay to government, and thereby you can also expect government to perform better because finances have been made available. Now in terms of initiatives that we've also carried out to expand the frontiers of the public finance, in 2016 we had the first tax amnesty whereby we had waived interest and penalty and during that period, we were able to achieve a collection of 68 billion out of 96 billion that was established. After that, we thought that we had covered most grounds. And then eventually, VAIS was also launched. Now, VAIS also included the state governments or individuals. And when we look at the progress that we have been able to achieve collectively, we still have a lot of room for improvement. At the time we launched phase, we had about 10 million taxpayers. At the end of phase, we now have 19.5 million taxpayers. It might seem like an impressive growth, though it shows an increase of 100%. We know that we have at least 45 to 50 million active adults who should still be in the tax net. So therefore, we're just about halfway as to where we should be. And I'll also let you know some information that we do have that we're currently working on. As an organization, we also believe in the, the phrase that charity begins at home. So we also promote local content. As an agency of government, we do patronize local businesses. Uh, at least half of our vehicles have been bought from Pan to ensure that we continue to support um, local, I'll, I'll call it not manufacturing, assembly plants, which also provide employment. I would also like you to do the same in also your purchases. In terms of convenience, We've also given taxpayers the ability to choose where their tax file resides. But with these solutions, most of you actually don't even need a manual tax file. But if you still want to come into any office, you can choose the location of your tax file anywhere within Nigeria. We've also stepped up the taxpayer education at most functions, whether they be concerts, um, conferences, we also give out a lot of tax information for those who just need to brush up and get more information. We also introduced a new team called FIT, which is the Federal Enlightenment and Engagement Tax Team. And they go out to educate taxpayers on 
tax payments, reasons why the tax payments should be made, also help with registration of both individuals and corporate organizations. They also help the states whereby we would register individuals and hand them over to the respective state uh, governments. We believe that there is no benefit in saying you have an effective tax administration system at the federal level and the states are lagging behind. To the taxpayer, they actually do not care whether it's state tax or federal tax. All they know is that taxes are being paid and they expect services. So not unmindful of that. As the chairman of the Joint Tax Board, which compromise, which also includes the state internal revenue services, the federal inland revenue service, and other arms of government, including customs, road safety, and a few others, we have come together to exchange information to make sure that we collectively can provide more efficient and effective services. One of the new measures that we will, we will be introduced in this month is, for example, the collection of driver's licenses. We found out that there are quite a number of uncollected driver's licenses in certain offices at the state level, and we've also made our own offices available over, all over the nation for that process. Um, you'll be informed of that very soon. We have, as of last count, well over 25 to 30,000 driver's licenses that have been ready or not yet collected across the country. We also do work with anti-corruption agencies. Of course, by name, you know the ICPC, the FCC, to help us to ensure that both the taxpayer is protected just as well as the tax administrator. And how do, do I, how, what do I mean by that? A number of you have had your withholding tax deducted and not remitted. So when it comes to areas of that, of that nation, of that, um, of that, yes, we also work with them to make sure that on your behalf, we can make sure that you do get your withholding tax credits when you're filing your returns. And also, our staff are also quite aware that the same agencies we work to, to protect you would also check what we're doing as tax administrators. So we're looking at it both ways. We've also had to strengthen our enforcement activities because after the last two and a half years of discussing with taxpayers, we still found out that there are quite a number of taxpayers that are still not tax compliant. Now this gives you an idea of what we're currently working on. Like I said, we do have quite a bit of information. We looked at businesses, partnerships, and others, enterprises that had banking turnover of one billion and above for the last three years, out of which 2,571 had a tin and had never made one for ball in tax payments. 409 had no tin and no payments, meaning that if we just look at those two numbers together, close to 3,000 had not made one couple in payments, but had banking turnover in excess of three billion during that period. Another 3,000, also in that category, had little or no tax payments. And basically, we had written to them, asking them to go to the nearest tax office, file their returns, and those that did not, we applied what we call substitution, whereby we put a lend on their bank accounts until they come forward and also make good their payments. We also looked at your assets. And a lot of people mistook this for what we call property tax, but it was not property tax. The law simply says that where you do not file returns, we use your turnover to estimate the taxes due 
to government. So we looked at properties. And we started off at home in the Kodakai, in FCT, to look at properties under the ownership of corporate organizations that did not have a tax ID or had never paid any taxes before. Now, this gives an idea of the breakdown. In FCT alone in Abuja, we've issued 2,672 demand notices, meaning 2,672 properties with under ownership of corporate organizations that have never filed or paid any taxes. To date, we now have 653 that have started filing. And in terms of payments, they made payments of about 3 billion naira. Now, out of those, 114 said they do not own the, the, the properties in question. For those ones, of course, we will be referring them to the presidency or to the federal government for further action. Now, in terms of the total number of demand notices also sell about 5,000 and we received responses from about 1,346. Now, what that simply means in terms of total value, we have properties in Abuja alone in excess of 2 trillion naira under corporate ownership where no taxes or filings were done. So basically, this initiative was taken across Nigeria. We concluded in Lagos also. We are, we are finishing up in Kaduna, Oshu, and Oyo, and we're going to do it state by state. So once again, it is not property tax. It just has to do with ownership of uh, property in terms of assets and where it comes from the corporate organization and where taxes have not been paid or where there is even no tax ID, we expect to bring them into the tax net and make them pay the appropriate amount. Uh, this graph gives an indication of the oil versus non-oil revenue. Of course, the line on top is in non-oil revenue to date, while the blue line is the oil tax oil revenue. So between 20 12 and dates, you can see a deep drop in the tax from the oil revenue and you can see the growth in the non-oil tax revenue. And we expect that to keep on uh, growing. In conclusion, tax justice, simply put, is about the existence of tax systems that promotes social well-being within and between societies, and the creation of environments in which all people and businesses can prosper. For us to prosper, for us to have a better increased standard of living, all of us have to come together and pay our taxes. One thing is simple, and one thing is clear. Without accountants doing the right thing, this is not possible. Everyone here has a very important role to play. And before I close, I'd like to thank the chairman of the session. For those of you who do not know, any time I had an issue or advice from Labour State, he was always willing to give me advice. And actually, as we sat here this morning, he had already given me some words of advice. So the chairman, I'd like to thank you for your support. I'd also like to thank the President of Council for giving me this opportunity to come and have a discuss with you today. And I hope that this will be a new beginning of a renewed relationship, not tax consultants against tax administrators, but one family working together. And I believe that if we do share this common vision, we will make Nigeria great again. Thank you. God bless. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I think that he needs a louder applause. Um, 
Nobody really likes the tax collector, even the Bible says so. But that does not mean we should not appreciate the person who is doing a job on our behalf. Another one, please. Because of the relevance, so recognize the fact that we are the executive secretary of the Joint Tax Board, Mr. Oseni Elama. Where are you? Uh, let everybody see you. Right. Thank you very much. Now, the bottom line of what we have here before us is what how we're going forward. But the news to you, connecting it to the papers of yesterday, is the fact that you are now having technology being used. The days when you could hide either your income, your assets, are disappearing very fast. Privacy uh, is being uh, removed. So. The story now goes to our panelists. Tell us from your view, because everybody seated here, at least, is one of the three. You are either a tax administrator, a taxpayer, or a tax advisor. But everybody here is a taxpayer. The last time I checked, even the past president who have in fact paid taxes all their years have not been exempted yet. Uh, is there an exemption for our elders? <laughs> it's something we may need to consider here. Ladies and gentlemen, I will now call on uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Please come forward. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'll please permit me to stand on existing protocols uh, because of time. I'm going to quickly thank you. I'm going to quickly make some um, reactions to the presentation by the chairman of the FRS, and then I will run quickly through. I have about five slides um, to share my thoughts. I like this point about. You know, holding government to account, as a matter of fact, it's not the responsibility of the tax authority. It is our responsibility, and we will do that starting from here. The tax to GDP ratio, I like his optimism um, by saying in the next 18 months, we should be close to 20%. He didn't tell us where we are because everybody knows we are currently at about 60% tax to GDP ratio. Uh, if you're going to be close to 20%, they're talking about increasing it like three folds, you know, in 18 months. I like to be realistic. Um, it will be a miracle if it happens. But maybe we shouldn't rule it out. Non all tax revenue um, is now more than 60%, which means we're making more from non oil than from oil in terms of taxes. But two things to consider so we put it in context. You know, as accountants, we like to analyze. So one factor is that if oil revenue and tax permits is going down, even without doing anything, knowing oil will be more than oil, isn't it? So what we have to do is to ensure that we make the non-oil sector and the tax we collect from that sector to grow faster. Okay, so that over time is sustainable. I do like to say always that tax is never a standalone issue. You cannot talk about taxation without talking about the economy because tax is how government collects a fraction from the prosperity of businesses and of individuals. If individuals and businesses are struggling, you can audit them from now on until things don't come, comes and you will not get anything out of it. The electronic tax system, I would like to commend the FRS and the Joint Tax Board um, for making Nigeria one of the countries where you can say, well, I, I can take taxes from the comfort of my home. 
which is good. One thing though, and I like to, yes, so thank you for that. So one thing I'd like to mention though is, I want us to move away quickly from the efforts that we have put in, which we commend. Let's start focusing more on the outcome and impact. How many of our taxpayers are now filing returns online? How easier that process is compared to the manual process we used to have? Can we even quantify the savings to them? And let's continue to engage with the people so that we can even continue to improve this process. Now, um, the role of tax consultant is another thing he mentioned, uh, and I'm not going to be defending tax consultant. So I stand here in my capacity. Actually, I think I'm wearing almost all the three hats. I'm a taxpayer, proudly taxpayer, um, and I'm a tax consultant, and I'm a friend of the tax administrator. So I can speak to almost all the three areas. But I do agree that consultants, especially accountants, owe it as a duty to society and to themselves to do the right thing and also to encourage others and help them to do so. As an accountant, if you support clients in manipulating records, you're just as guilty as the person committing the fraud. There's a point about FRS trying to get agencies of government to even pay tax, which is good. And I hope we can do that even more. And beyond that, put the information out there. We want to audit the information. Like Mr. Fala said the other time, that FRS staff pays tax. Say, that's cool, but who is auditing the FRS? Who audits the auditor? And I have to also let you know, in case you are not aware, the Auditor General for the Federation recently released a report after auditing the presidency, the National Assembly, and a few other agencies. I was, I was, I was disappointed but not surprised to find out that the presidency and the National Assembly haven't been remitting taxes for their staff. This is not me. Auditor General for the Federation. These were in hundreds of millions of naira. Now I can give it to Mr. Fala. It's difficult to go to the presidency, audit them, and issue a session and say you must pay. You lose your job the following day. <laughs> but those of us we hold the highest office in this land, where the taxpayers, we will hold everyone to account. No one should be above the law. So I'll quickly go through the five slides I have in terms of my uh, take on the issue we're discussing. Now, i like to say, let's put it in context and say this is about the social contract. Tax is about the social contract. Taxes, according to Franklin Roosevelt, he said, they are the dues we pay for the privileges of membership in an organized society. And people would question, is our society organized? I say maybe the reason why it's not so organized is because we're not paying taxes. Three In countries where they pay taxes, they are more organized. Three tax justice is a fair system of taxing. I agree with the FRS chairman. Public finance is how disciplined you are in spending those money you've collected. So is the social contract broken? Okay? We have tax policy issues. Our laws are okay. He mentioned stamp duty. That's the law of 1939. Before we even thought the internet would come into play, before we even had Nigeria in its current form, and we have not amended that law. We all know that they want to impose, and they are imposing stamp duty on electronic banking. Nobody was going to be an issue. We can amend the laws. This of paying taxes, slow judicial process. If you disagree with the tax authority, if it's a normal thing, and you want to take it to court, in this country, it can take you between 5 to 15 years. I read one story, which I thought was very apt. It was about a monkey and some goats. Now, these goats were running. It was Christmas time. And the monkey said, why is this guy running? He said, they are looking for goats to kill for Christmas. So the monkey joined them, and he started running. And he said, monkey, but you are not a goat. He said, it's better to run because in Nigeria, it takes 15 years to prove that it's not a goat. <laughs> So we all know that justice delayed is 
just do the night. So, social services uh, is an issue. You pay tax and you have to take care of yourself. You don't feel like you should pay again. Why should I fix my roads, provide my water, and still pay taxes? And uh, so from the top, I mentioned that multiple taxation. Because of my time, what should we do? Let's not talk about the problems alone. We can solve this problem together. Way forward for me, it's both government and the people. Um, in terms of the people, pay your tax correctly. It's tax injustice for you to demand social services when you haven't paid taxes. So you must pay on time and pay correctly. Government must ensure that they use that revenue for the purpose of the people. It is not enough to spend the money for the people, it must be a priority that impacts on the people. Don't go and build a golf course because you like to play golf when there's no road in your state. Don't go and build an airport because you like to fly and your family when there's no road, there's no power school. So beyond being a legal obligation, tax is also a civic duty, so we must be willing to pay. Our government must set the tone from the top, and we need to have taxpayer advocacy, where government will say, let's listen to the taxpayers and pay attention to what they're saying, and we must ensure accountability and transparency. So in closing, I want to quote Mahatma Gandhi. He said, there are seven deadly sins, politics without principle, wealth without work, commerce without morality, pleasure without conscience, education without character, Science without humility and worship without sacrifice. So I thought I should add number eight to it. And that number eight is tradition without tax justice. So I want to ask if you are in support of having this, you say aye. If you are not in support, you say nay. The eyes have it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Yodele. Uh, one question you left behind, which the Chairman of the Federal Revenue Service will be answering, is the one you raised about what the Auditor General said in his report. And I told you to get ready to encourage us that they're not getting away with it. So you'll be answering that at the appropriate time. I will now like to call Mr. Okayemi, so please come forward. Good morning. Um, um, you see the average tax, uh, the average tax here in the market. Um, 2006, 2016, she pays uh, 2,000 naira in tax, and then 2018, with all the local government and everybody, APC, Arizona, pays 12,000. The road to a house in Makoko is flooded. There's no light. The children cannot even go to school. So in that sense, um, the issue is um, the taxes being paid by this average Nigerian citizen. What is being gained from it? Just similar to the chairman's um, definition of tax justice about fairness in collection and fairness in spending. My own definition on top is that tax justice demands that tax payment made by the taxpayers should be and um, the taxpayers who pay the tax should see the result of the taxes they are paying. If they are not, then the taxes are not being um, justified, they are not justified, and they should not be collected. Um, in Nigeria, so, um, if you go to slide 21, um, you see the way Nigeria spends the money collected. Um, if you see, compared to other countries, I have to refer to what banks is more credible than one being paid out by most people with interest. You will see there that, um, out of all the countries in the uh, in Nigeria, in the West Africa that are compared to Nigeria, Nigeria is one of the least money to spend on health. So the average taxpayer, although paying tax, out of the um, GDP, only three for tax is didn't spend on health in Nigeria. If you go to the next slide, you see the same thing on education. Nigeria does not have very verifiable data to know how much is being spent on um, education. Whereas in um, Nigeria, Mali. Percentage. If you go to um, table six, you see how much we spend on agriculture. We all eat. Um, Nigeria, as of 2014, has a different age. Compared to Nigeria, one of the poorest countries ahead of us, just over Nigeria, 
Marriage spends 20 points here. So, um, if you see all this, you see that Nigerian does not spend, um, the tax rate does not enjoy the benefit of the taxes being paid. Um, in, you see the, the causes of the um, lack of justice, just table um, manner to spend it. Number one, they see the multinational companies, they come from Nigeria, the way they set up their subsidiaries. If you practice in TAT, tax of you see that most of the cases that come from TAT, they concern multinationals how they uh, devise schemes, although we have beds and um, all others, they have not solved those, those problems. Another issue is the corruption, um, tax evasion. I give you the table here, the outflow. Uh, Communicating for 2008, 2013, 178, 178 billion um, naira as the siphon from Nigeria. And the all illicit flows, you can see. So, another cause of the um, uh, lack of justice in the sense of uh, tax collector, revenue collected because of this tax division mechanism by entities and the elites. Um, another thing is uh, the concession of power in the center. If you look at Nigeria, most of the money, most of the revenue collected from tax are collected by the federal government. This is not a truly federal situation and should be corrected. I talk as a lawyer. And then, um, we have outdated laws. We just had Mr. Daily talk now about the Sam Duties Act of 1939, how it can cope with 2018. I'm sure we'll be before the most of us here. Um, and then tax incentives granted to people who have powers, uh, who can, um, who are powerful and uh, power blockers in the communities, in the nation. So um, I now are the third areas that need um, review because I don't have time. Uh, these are these are the areas that uh, um, just like it, um, you see land discharge. I believe every lawyer, I know there are some lawyers there, know that. It's always local government who can collect uh, land discharges. So a lot of issues, uh, in question of multiple taxes, we pay companies to come tax, tech funds, NITD, those are consumer taxes, and then we are, uh, those are sort of conflicting, we are sort of killing the geese that are living in golden eggs. And then we have consumption taxes as well. But I know that they should not be, they should, there should not be multiple uh, multiplicity of taxes or double taxation in any manner. Um, you can see that the way Nigerian tax system is being located is that we focus so much on pay. Um, the people who are earning salaries, regular salaries, are the ones that pay the bulk of the money, which is not just, which is not fair, I'm sure, from the point of law um, and equity. Um, there is endemic corruption. One of the problems we have is the leakages. Corruption breeds leakages, which in which we cannot uh, actually combat uh, tax justice. We cannot fund our system so far as the money are leaking. Um, even tax amnesty that was mentioned earlier, uh, there was a, what do you call it, um, waivers or um, default have to go without paying penalties and um, interest. In other words, we are encouraging people to, hey, you can you know, do this. In the next 10 years, there will be another day. You can benefit from that, okay? You don't have to do it. And then, non question of tax evaders. In every other country, Canada or US that have worked in, tax evaders are uh, really funny. Then, um, I don't know if you know of Al Capone. Then they couldn't get him, the father of the E2C, the father of, the uh, the father of all bosses. When they couldn't get him enemies, they have to use tax evasion to get him. So, um, non review of tax regulations. Um, lack of strict adherence in 2012 tax policy by Mr. Um, Ifeko Okau Omogi, I believe. And then we have one led by Professor Gosnani. We do not follow, we do not follow those tax policies. There are many, um, there are many guardians laid down in those tax policies that can aid Nigeria tax policy being one of the best in the world. Uh, it seems that once we make the tax policy, they go into the cabinet. And, uh, there are some millions of problems that are setting tax administration. And we should, there's best practice that exists in the global world that Nigeria can follow, which we cannot discuss it. Um, again, we are recommending that rather than comparing the large percentage to be more tax for the Nigerian government should deal with the issue of trust deficit. As um, Mr. Day just mentioned, tax is a social contract. The citizen pay the tax, they're expecting benefits from it. In so far as the benefits are not flowing, there will be lack of trust that will be 
um, nonchalant attitude that to pay the, uh, the taxes. And then the issue of technology. Um, I don't know how many people have tried to uh, actually uh, pay the tax technologically. Or, I'm, I'm sure you, all of us are experiencing problems from that. Uh, that could be tackled in other ways. So, I've uh, listed some solutions which I can discuss during the question and answer. But then, I sort of quickly went to the Canadian experience which happened in 2017. What happened in that case is that Canada wanted to impose more taxes or restrict the use of um, family um, business uh, structure, tax that applies to uh, family businesses. When the law came out, before the law came out, the Canadian uh, Finance Ministry invited public consultation. And when the consultation, after the close consultation, they removed two of the proposals. And then still, the tax justice system in Canada compiled the email. They compiled the email of all the senators and the people on the Senate committee who are going to review that law. So that people can send emails directly complaining to those people. So that in Nigeria, my, uh, my advice on that is that we should be able to have access to the lawmakers because they are the ones who make these tax laws. And if we do not have, if we, don't have, if we, don't have if, if we common people do not have uh, contact with the um, lawmakers, they will continue to make taxes that will not be beneficial Carry to Carry Nigeria. On. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, for that, Ruben does not give you the privilege of delivering the whole paper. You can now come forward. All right? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I actually thought that uh, my session was going to be the easiest one uh, because of uh, lack of time. Nevertheless, in the spirit of uh, accountability, uh, your chairman, Mr. Alhaj Razak, and his council must justify why they brought me all the way from Nairobi. And therefore, I have to say a few things uh, before I leave the stage. Uh, my seniors have actually spoken much of the things that I already had, uh, but I'm going to spend a few more time uh, to highlight just a few of the things that probably may not have been uh, spoken here. I'd prepared my presentation in that format, but as you can see clearly, quite a number of things have already been elaborated upon, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Uh, but I'll, I'll move to what I call equality versus equity as we tackle this subject of um, tax and tax justice. And this takes me back, when I was looking at it, it takes me back to a period when I was growing up in the village as a young boy. And uh, wherever there was a match in the nearby town and we needed to go in there, instead of paying to get into the stadium to watch the match, I would jump into the trees. There used to be a lot of trees around the stadium and watch my match from there. So the question is, was that equity or equality? Of course, in my community, there are enough people who could pay and get into the stadium, but mine was actually to take up the trees and watch the match from there. So between equity and equality. So we are saying that to everyone according to his need and from everyone according to what his means. So that is the subject around tax justice, equality against uh, equity. Uh, there are a number of vetting principles, I don't want to dwell into that, the collection of uh, taxes, what is it that needs to be in place so that we can have a fair tax system. Those are things that I'm sure you've gone through and you understand a lot, but I want to specifically move to something that uh, uh, Chairman FIRS mentioned here that uh, when he collects your taxes, it's not his responsibility to know where that money goes to. But I want to challenge uh, you, Mr. Chairman, that one of the biggest pillars that will help us have confidence 
in the government system is to understand where that money goes to. And that is the building of what? Of confidence. So I cannot give out my money and still just let it off like that. And that's why I'm asking, can you give the fox, uh, can you give the world or the fox that's complete to guard your chicken? The answer is obviously no. So I still need to know, and that is the trust that we are building between ourselves and the tax uh, revenue agents. So that is very key for us to take note of. And this actually brings me to this slide here where we talk about the different drivers. What is it that is pushing us towards uh, this subject of tax reforms? They are now demands from the citizens. Citizen demands are demanding that we need to know exactly where these taxes are going to. They are developing partners who we are working with. And they also want to know what sort of accountability mechanisms do we have in terms of administering the taxes that we collect. And there are so many other stakeholders. And in fact, all these are pushing towards accountability, even from the government themselves, in order to build that uh, trust. There is um, the whole talk of enforcement on tax matters. And uh, the chairman, FRS, also mentioned that. But now there is also a shift towards collaboration. There is a huge shift, apart from enforcement mechanisms, there is a huge shift towards collaborative measures in the collection of taxes. And that's basically how we are going to help each other in expanding uh, the tax uh, that we are collecting. Do we have simplified mechanisms of compliance in order to increase customer orientation? Do we have issues clarified to the taxpayers on their obligations in form of support and advice. I was quite impressed to hear that there is a lot that's happened in terms of the use of technology. And I'll, talk to, uh, to, I'll speak to that in a little while. Paying greater attention to facilitating communication between the taxpayer and the revenue authority. As a matter of fact, this week um, I received a text and an, 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 and an email from my tax revenue authority back in my country, uh, Kenya, the Kenya Revenue Authority. We have this week what we call um, customer service uh, week. I don't know whether it is happening here as well. So in, because in the spirit of customer service, the tax authority in Kenya wrote me an email and said, Mr. Ruben Oruaru, we appreciate the partnership that we've had with you over the periods. We wish you well, even in the coming days, as you also partner with us in developing Kenya. So is that what we have here as well? So we are moving towards what we are calling collaboration between the tax authorities and, and the taxpayers themselves. So besides enforcement measures, then collaboration measures is something that we need to keep an eye on. Providing opportunities for correction and prevention, and even reminding us, you don't have to wait uh, until someone, you know, has gone past the due date or the deadline, and then you slap them with, you know, a tax penalty. Is there a mechanism in place reminding you whether you are supposed to be paying your tax or the duty is approaching? And the whole point around technology. What is it that we are doing uh, to utilize the emerging technologies? For example, the blockchain and artificial intelligence. I was also impressed to hear uh, what is happening here in Nigeria with regard to even paying your taxes. So. The use of technology is also another area that we can make, uh, we can utilize effectively in expanding uh, the tax uh, re uh, revenues that we are collecting from, from the public. So all these actually are the things that we are calling collaborative measures and it's basically what we should be doing in order to overcome the different obstacles that we are existing. Ladies and gentlemen, even as I conclude, I want to say that tax is part of the wider scope of what we call the public financial management and there is increasing you know focus by the government in that aspect in order to ensure that there is appropriate collection mechanisms in managing the public resources because tax is largely a public resources and to curb this animal we are calling corruption and as we speak about this animal i want you to know that it's actually a crossbow not only here but in many, many African countries, 
there is this problem that we have to tackle. And that's why we are saying that we still need to hold our governments to account as to where the taxes are going to, in order to improve the services and of course deal with another monster that is creeping the African continent, and that is public debt. Because if we do not collect enough from the citizens, then it means we do what? We go out and borrow. It's my hope that I've helped in enlightening you on this subject. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ruben. Um, the idea that uh, we should be receiving letters from the revenue authorities to assure us that uh, they have received our taxes and that we are their partners. This is a very reassuring thing. It does not reduce the amount of tax I pay. So it makes me feel good that it took the trouble of remembering me. Now, before we go on to questions and answers, um, I will, there's a question that arose earlier, and I will ask the chairman of the Board of Inland Revenue to, 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 IRS, to now respond to the one about the, no, sorry, sit down, respond to the, um, the Astro Rock issue. And, um, uh, uh, he, when he finishes, uh, another one, uh, Mr. Elama, you, I ask you to rise up again. You are the Executive Secretary of the Joint Tax Board, and therefore you have access to all the state chairmen of internal revenue. Is that correct? Be taking notes of what's been said here. 4,000 federal accountants are speaking. Note it and go and tell them state by state. Do we agree? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, the Chairman. And I would like to state without reservation, the Presidency is interested that all corporates and individuals pay their taxes. They have given the FIRS their full support and at present we are in a process of deducting that source. We are expecting information from all state revenue agencies that have got outstanding taxes due to them from federal MDAs and at the same time we've also uh, done an audit of state governments that are owing taxes and we're in the process of deducting that source. So if any state agency has got any federal um, MDA that, that's owing paying, they've been given notice to do that. Now, for, yeah, that, <laughs> well, because we're saying federal MDA, it also includes Apple Rock. Um, and <laughs> I can assure you that this information will be made public, at least for the um, <laughs> for ICA members, <laughs> let you know that the exercise has been concluded. Uh, Registrar Chief Executive, did you hear that? So, anyway, he has given you the answer as far as he can go. Remember, he's an employee. Now, because of the live situation, I want to get the questions. I can see you now. Let's see. Everybody from there, yes. You are number one. Come and stand here quickly. We are the lady number two, three. Uh, four, five. Otuba, what do you Please, as fast as they sit down, we'll bring the microphone to you. Thank you very much. Hello. My name is Oyebadi Olejeko. Membership number 6789. I have two questions for Mr. Blackie Fowler. Some of the innovations you introduced is the issue of e but I can tell you that it is slowing down the process. When you apply for tax transfer now, you are not sure of getting it on the first day. Even when you find the pay, I want you to look into that. Then, over the centralization of the ignorance of tax transfer, the state tax rulers now find tax transfer to be, you know, instead of tax rulers. Why? It is also slowing down the process. Then last but not the least, 
on the issue of all the life within the time trade. We now have our client to apply to Abuja before they can utilize you know, Kutori Tan credit. Are you doubting the Kutori Tan receipt? Do we do this? I think that is not fair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, please. Good morning, sir. My name is Nicola Akumala, the membership number 5947. In addition to what um, my colleague just, the person my colleague just answered, uh, asked, I'd like to please ask the chairman to bridge the gap among various um, FIS offices across the nation with respect to uh, taxpayers. A situation where it's where a current taxpayer is being asked or accused of not paying taxes or is not even on the tax list is really embarrassing and we need to do something about that. We're talking about ease of doing business. What my committee has just said is just the tip of the iceberg. Just like all the reforms that is taking place in the FIRS, which is going to make our uh, doing businesses easier, we realize that the, the ease of compliance is uh, not there. Yeah, yes, we need to work and improve on that. A lot of times you want to work on the e-services, it's not there. You okay. pay and you cannot get your receipt from in good time or you just don't need access to it. You need to do that. You also need to have an explanation on the audits, what's on the uh, utility tax, what, uh, what amounts to ordinary cost of business. You know that utility taxes is a charge on the uh, contracts of services or goods, or goods and services. But sometimes we cannot differentiate, differentiate between what's called arm's length transaction or over the counter transaction simply because a client chooses, I mean, a vendor, a, a client chooses to buy goods, maybe on credit or you check. Your officer says, oh, that amounts to uh, contract of service for which taxes will be detailed. The last one on the withholding tax schedule is still on the account of uh, differentiating uh, between commission based transactions between an agent and uh, a principal. Most importantly, to airline okay. businesses. Please. We need to make a clarification which, uh, on what forms, on what should be, uh, on what taxes should be withheld on that. 5% on the commission of 5% on the entire uh, value of contract. That needs to be. I hear that the Auditor General of the Federation is here and he has to clarify a specific issue that was raised. So we don't keep on. Do we agree? Where is the Auditor General? Uh -huh. How are you, please? They cannot shave your hair behind your back. Now, could you please respond to that specific issue? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it is. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I, I think uh, it is necessary for me to correct some impressions so that we don't live here with the wrong impression as so wrong, because I've had shouting of as so wrong. Uh, since we published the 2016 report with notice uh, even a section of the press, there is so much a kind of uh, sensationalism in uh, audio reporting. What we reported is we, we noticed deductions by quite a number of MDAs in terms of VAT withholding tax and even some payee not remitted. And I think this is, uh, this should assist the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Like I've been mentioned already, it's an issue of collaboration. I think, uh, I don't think that we reported as so wrong. So I want to correct this impression so that we don't leave here. <laughs> Uh, I think, 
you have had a clarification. Uh, whether you like it or not, that is this clarification. You cannot do your own clarification. And as a daughter of the Federation, I will not allow you to leave this place. Let us get to know him and see him. He is one of us. We are very welcome, sir. Thank you very much for coming. Now we can continue quickly. Thank you very much, Mr. Shiyama. Sorry, is that all right? James Emado is my name, 5944. My question is on the matter of tax justice. Mr. Fowler, one of the things I expect you to implement quickly is tax reform from your office when people have overpaid. And I will tell you how it happened. Mr. David was working with Kusheni Bank yesterday. Up till June, he was paying tax. He lost his job by July. That tax he was paying was calculated based on his salary and it has been appropriated for the whole year. If he did not get a job before the year ends, at the end of the year, a task was ordered to evaluate this record and file for reform because it must have overpaid. Same thing when you look on the side of corporations, companies. I am supplying a business of 23,000 naira, I bought it. I added a profit of 2,000, giving me 25,000. I issued an invoice of 26,000. I mean 250, that is plus 5% tax. If I have the misfortune of supplying that to your office, when you are paying me, you will pay both 5% back and 5% withholding tax. The profit that comes to me at the end of the day is 750. At the end of the year, by the time I do my account and remove my administrative cost, I am in losses. But I have huge tax credits and I cannot get reform. It's wrong. Finally, oh, okay. Okay. so we must be able to get reform. That is how it works all over the world. Finally, I want to thank the Auditor General for his explanation. I also want to thank Mr. Paola for his explanation. We are Nigerians, but sometimes if we cannot collect taxes from MPAs, we may not have the moral right Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question, please. Now, we are going to be shorter, please. Get to the point, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is uh, Abi Tuche, membership number 148H14. Uh, my question also goes to the Chairman of the FRS. Uh, we know that we are doing the self assessments and the audits which come from time to time. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir. If the taxpayer is agreed, or the tax authority normally go to either the appeal tribunal or the courts, my question is uh, at what point can the IRS go and look up the business premises or seize or freeze the accounts of corporate organizations? Uh, what are the processes involved? And if this process exists, should, is it not supposed to be publicized so that all the taxpayers know about it up hand? Not that uh, we use the situation where, the situation where, like, uh, what I would say, like the police will do, they will wait behind when you commit the crime, the command and pressure. Why don't we just publicize it first so that when we know, if you know it and somebody commits that, they will uh, inform them. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. While we are doing this, I go back to the executive secretary of the Joint Tax Board, because it's not all the taxes. In fact, most of the issues are at the state level. So you have that responsibility. I'm going to allow you one minute at the end of it to reassure us that everything we're discussing here, you will document and send to all the states, Chairman. I hope you understand that. Thank you. Next question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Mr. Sasa. Membership is 0486. My question is based on the justice and equity in tax code. Uh, most of the most um, um, authorities are the states that are using consultants. 
And most of these consultants, they will go to the trade center, they will lock up the shop, the shop, they will charge you high above what they are paying. And then the 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 taxpayer the will, will, will have a room to complain. When they run the tax authority, they say you should go back and say to the consultants. So how far are they giving to the taxpayer in this matter? My name is Benedict Angelis here, membership number 10840. My question is on the area of technology. The chairman FIRS has made a comment about using technology to improve the collection of tax, which is very important. But what about Bitcoin? We notice that people are transacting on Bitcoin in Nigeria. Last year, 89 billion was transacted on Bitcoin. And the thing about Bitcoin is, Corrupt people, when they steal our money and they put it on Bitcoin, you can't trace it. What is the FRS doing about tracking these people? When people, some other people are also collecting money on Bitcoin, if they go abroad, they can use an ATM and, 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 and catch the money. So what are you doing about that? Then Robert, with my second point, is just an observation and a comment. Robert mentioned about blockchain. I think it's important to move forward, that FIS should also develop something like a blockchain where everybody who has a mobile phone will have access to what's happening on that system. So that accountant can actually provide some services along the blockchain for them. I'm sure if you talk to us at ICANN, we'll help you do that. Thank you very much. I think we'll finish on that side. We'll finish in the federal house. We can now move to the Senate. We start off by listening to the list of all who past president of Guti uh, Please take the microphone to him very quickly. Please. Yes. Mr. Chairman of this session, and Mr. Fowler, President of the Federal Revenue. <clears throat> my name, my name has already been mentioned. I'm High Chief Senior on the Law of Guti the list of Prime Minister of Ondo Kingdom, my number is 103. And the past president, 1995-1996. Uh, I'm using this opportunity, first of all, to heartily congratulate Mr. Fowler. I'm meeting him, seeing him for the first time, but uh, your work is for you. We appreciate what you are doing. And in those days, federal government used to rely basically on customs money collected. But now we can see the difference. Federal land revenue is really up to the task. I congratulate you on what you are doing. But in those days, we used to have tax being assessed on yearly basis. 85, 86, it doesn't go beyond that. But with the self-assessment, which was another innovation, whatever it is, people go by it. But what I observe now with the self-assessment, you don't look into what has happened until other six years. You start with the tax audit, and tax audit, you go back six years. Time is of essence. So I'm suggesting, instead of uh, six years before you do your tax audit, I know you have the tax strength now. You are recruiting staff. Again, I have to congratulate you for that. Quite a number of chartered accountants are now working with the Federal Revenue. That's the right step in the right direction. If you want to recruit more, so the issue of not until five or six years before you do tax audit is not an ideal situation. I would suggest after self-assessment, they pay the tax, don't wait until six years before you say you are doing tax audit. They will come and pay another penalty or whatever, whatever. So that's my main, main thing. Then the issue of um, penalty. For instance, if somebody, you know, at times the banks are not even ready. Even when the banks are ready, they can tell you there is no network and so on and so forth. If you are late by one week or by the, uh, the weekend, 
you couldn't pay, and your staff will still insist that for the one day, because of the bank problem, or oh, no one has it, you still have to pay the penalty. I think something ought to be done about that. Thank you very much. But the basic thing is that six years is too long to have a group of what has happened. So please do something about that. You have to start with the three years. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Abondo. Now, you, 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 I, I took over from him. That's why I said he's my boss. He was my president. I was his wife. I learned a lot from him. But for you young people, you can see how sharp his brain still is. When you get to that stage, I hope you will be as sharp as this. Uh, let's now go to other past presidents. Please, William. Chairman, sir, thank you so much, sir. And all of that was called for that. Two comments. You could choose to sit down, past president. I'll stand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you a lot. Now, we had experience of withholding taxes taken from our small revenues. Then, we used to offset our tax. But then there was the issue of uh, penalties. And I was told that we have bring cash when they see some surplus on the tax tax. Yeah. Why should the government be owing me and I'll go and look for money to pay government? They should be able to remove whatever liability any taxpayer has from whatever money they have to put in that revenue. Thank you very much. Then second one, I've never been in tax practice, but I know a lot of our members who are doing farmer work for various in our revenue authorities. They will do the work, what do many of the inner revenue the chairman of uh, this uh, revenue body do? They go behind, they are like that they go behind them and go and the settling with the taxpayers, behind the, behind of the of the tax consultants. That is very well here and it's unethical. Secondly, some of them are owed their commission for six months, one year, two years. If you do that, the people will try to settle their revenue by, by paying themselves out of your services. I think the Indian Revenue Authority should have a, a law or a court understanding that within two months of the member of ICANN doing the time work, he must pay this commission. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I will now go back to the other members, please. Please make it very sharp, please, because uh, we are only part of Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is uh, Godwin Umaka, membership number 4801. Mine is a suggestion to the chairman and probably the state chairman of uh, uh, and that's the area of uh, tax inclusiveness. There's some area of tax uh, bracket that we ought to cover, like in locations we have people who have made so much money and they come out to display. Instead of the government Banning the trading of money, the tax people should recommend to the government to rather find a way to tax them. And by so doing, you'll be able to make more money for the government. Why do you want to tax them? Somebody is deriving job in spreading the wealth they have made. Some of them, of course, if you check their tax file, you find out they wouldn't have paid the correct tax. So it's a suggestion I'm making. It can be shared between the federal and the state government, such as collected, just like that. And then, um, through that, we can make more money for the government. Uh, if you need more details, I'm available to ask you. Thank you. My name is Samson Babatunde Akpe, membership number 29973. I'm asking this question on behalf of a group of uh, uh, taxpayers. Open or who cannot pay tax. These are the public servants or civil servants, particularly the federal employees who work in uh, various states of the federation. What is your office? No, I mean, what mechanism is your office or has your office put in place to alleviate the suffering of this group of taxpayers in uh, getting tax clearance when it's time for them to get tax clearance? It faces a lot of difficulties at various tax offices to get this. This is my question. Thank you very much. Good morning, sir. My, my name is Kemi Adimbuiwa, 42636. My question is for one for the um, chairman of the IRS and the other one for the GCP chairman too. The first question is on um, filing. 
when you go to bank to file a um, resource, maybe like bars or any other type of thing, the bars usually, even most of the time, they start to go very early in the morning, like 8 o'clock, which we cannot be, we have to be in our offices. They think they will say that it's no service. And when you leave the five day, maybe the teller and other things, for them to work on and come back, maybe later in the day, they might say, oh, there is still no service. And when I come back the next day, I will take come and fill another teller. They will tell me, oh, when the FIS come for their audits, especially uh, these uh, FIS, FIS precisely, the issue is that uh, when they see another date, it may be a previous date, not that same date, no, they can't work on it, that they will be fined or penalized or something like that. And it has been happening, not even once or twice, almost like every once in every quarter. So this issue is, companies, many people will just keep quiet, oh, this next day I will send somebody to go and which we have to do, and we give the first to our bosses in the office. I think something has to be done about the e filing is on some account, the banking and your portal to other banks. There are real issues about it. Thank you very much. Then the JCD tax is concerning the state internal revenue. Most of our tax card they give us this tax um, e e card they give us this uh, um, plastic. Most of it are not quality. Just like these are voter scan. Some the name the page now be uh, page. I have a card that I am holding and the line is is a little more. I have to use maybe cello tape to close to cover it. Which if I want to use elsewhere, they say oh, even to some bank, they say they, they can't collect this money. Madam is not relevant. I think something has to be done about. I think well, that was for Those are the questions. Thank, Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. And that brings an end to the questions. I would uh, be calling on the Federal Revenue Service to respond to the myriad of questions in summary. And um, on that, because I'm going to give one, just one minute to the permission of the President, one minute to the Executive Secretary of the Joint Task Force. Let him come and sit here. People will get to know him. We can hold him responsible on behalf of all the state chairmen. Thank you. Uh, the Chairman, thank you. And distinguished ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your questions. Uh, Trying to take down the next, but along the line, I, I missed a few, so I'll answer the questions. And if I skip any, please uh, don't hesitate to let me know. The first question was the e solutions going down the process. What we have done is that in our branches we have got at least two computers ready and available to any taxpayer who needs guidance on the e-solutions. We also have the opportunity to taxpayers to also use the, man the manual process. So in any time of change, sometimes there might be a slowdown, but eventually you'll find out that the e-solutions are much more convenient and quicker. In terms of the over centralization of the issuance of tax uh, certificates, uh, well, we're family members here, so I'll be very frank with you. We had a situation whereby some of our tax controllers were issuing tax certificates illegally. And in terms of numbers, um, running into thousands. And in doing our review, we found out that they were not uploaded. We found out that some taxpayers would, for lack of a better word, would provide incentive to some tax controllers because they wanted a tax certificate to get jobs and uh, bid for jobs. And they were talking about, right now we're talking about um, fairness and justice. We said until our systems are up and well running, that the state coordinator will be responsible to sign off. But at the same time, it should not take more than two weeks for anyone to get a tax fair certificate. We also publicize in newspapers that if it's beyond two weeks, you should contact the director of efficiency who is here present, Mr. Faramadio Munsoya, and I'll ask him to call out his number and also my SAICT, if they could both stand, and they'll also... Let them come here. Okay, they'll also give you their number. That's the Director of Efficiency and my SAICT. If you do the manual process, 
and within two weeks you do not get your tax rate certificate, please let either of these gentlemen know. So I apologize, but in the interest of fairness and um, to make sure that we weed out some of the bad eggs, I mean, even in the number the 12, one was bad. So the please bear with us. We wanted to make sure that people who get a tax rate certificate get a proper tax rate certificate. In terms of bridging the gap between uh, people not paying taxes and um, the ease of doing business, which I was not too sure. But in terms of bridging the gap, we interact with different stakeholder groups. In terms of the ease of doing business, at the last uh, review, the payment of tax went down by 11 points which also was part of the 24 points uh, reduction or improvement as for Nigeria and the country, the ease of doing business. And I think with the new innovations that we have uh, put in place, I think we're heading in the right direction. In terms of um, the, whether you have a contract or direct purchase, first of all, if the issue that certainly does not mean that you are what you can issue a check for pay and a direct case. If for any reason you disagree with the tax official, you're free to object in writing and it will be taken up. In terms of the airlines, the five percent is not on total sales, it's five percent on commission paid. In terms of the tax refund, um, prior to now, we used to have two billion allocated to FIRS for the payment of tax refunds, and I'm sure that all large corporate accounts, banks, and others who were entitled to tax refunds were being paid. The tax refund also applies at the state level. Um, I'm also the chairman of the Joint Tax Board, but I can tell you that when it gets to the state level. I cannot um, confirm that you will get a tax refund in cash. I do know that some states will give you a tax credit. But if you have a situation where a state's internal revenue service does not process either, please make a report to the Joint Tax Board and we'll take it up. In terms of the tax credits you have, from the FIRS, we have uploaded our system from 2012 to date. So if you have any outstanding tax credits you want to use to offset current taxes, you're free to do so. You can actually download those receipts by yourself on your own system. In terms of our green taxpayers, by law, you do have the right to object. Once you object and this is reviewed, and I will first of all talk about the FIRS. We go through various reconciliation meetings until your liability becomes final. And, uh, and at that point, uh, we engage in discussions. And on an average, it takes us one year on an average before we go to sealing up a business. For us, every business that we close down, stops production, which means they stop earning money. I want to stop earning money, they stop paying taxes. So it's not in our interest to stop any business uh, from, from uh, continuing on, on their business, because we know we should get additional tax. Um, the issue about the it's an issue that I think has, is receiving worldwide um, attention and we are currently looking into it. I also sit on the digital economy at the United Nations and we're having a meeting actually this month in Geneva. So those are issues that are being discussed worldwide and, and certainly I uh, will inform you when we get back the way forward. However, I'm quite aware a number of people are losing money 
on this Bitcoin. So I'll just advise that you be very cautious in dealing with it. Um, I would like to also refer to someone who said about the blockchain, basically. I think you are, you are about the sharing of the information between different government agencies, which we presently are doing, to find out the taxes that are due, both at the federal and state levels. We do exchange information internal revenue services, and as of last month, we now have a consolidated tax uh, database whereby a state or the federal um, inland revenue service at a touch of a button can tell the tax status of both corporate and individuals anywhere in Nigeria. I'd also like to salute our father, the High Chief uh, 103 for his remarks. And um, also tell you that we agree with you totally that doing a six year audit is too long. We are currently at three years, but what we did find out, sir, is that when we looked at the self-assessments, most of them were not transparent, they were not correct. And so we started off with a six-year audit. We are now at a three-year uh, period. The next audit that we are starting right now is for a maximum of three years. I would believe that we will be at a maximum of two years by the next audit period, which will be uh, in 2019. However, we believe that once we can establish a trend for those taxpayers that have been seen to be compliant, we will not, we will allow them to do a self-audit and we will only do an audit as required, you know, based on our risk analysis. In terms of the payment for late returns, whereby payments are made one week late, or two weeks late, um, I can say here, at least until next year, we will waive all such penalties for any payments that is at least, or at most, one week old. Basically, that, that would come under administrative issues. And as we move more into technology, I believe that that will be a thing of the past. In terms of withholding tax use to offset taxes, and the request for a cash payment, um, that is not required. If you have adequate withholding tax credit notes, you do not have to make any other payment. So please uh, bring that up. The issue of consultants that work, that do TAMA work, I can talk about the Federal Inland Revenue Service. If you work for us, within 30 days, you will get paid. At the state level, my hands are a bit tied. But if you have done work at the state level and the state government has not paid you, you can make uh, reports to the Joint Tax Board and we will take it up for you. The issue of um, display of wealth. Um, we basically, as tax administrators, both at the federal and the state level, do monitor these things. We are quite aware of those who have this wealth, and I can assure you that we are taxing them accordingly. The issue of filing VAT and systems breakdowns at, from the bank, and that's why I have the Director of Efficiency here and the SAICT uh, to my office here. Um, Any time with technology, there could be a disruption of business. But well, please let us know. We also have people that monitor uh, this on a, on a daily basis. But any time it does happen, please let us know. On the issue of the tax credits cards, like I just informed you now, we have a consolidated tax database for the first time in the country. We will be issuing new cards and we're in the process of discussing with suppliers so that if you have a state internal revenue tax card, or you have an open state or a different state tax card, we will come up with a uniform tax card which will distribute free of charge, and that card will also have, have a purse on it. So it's something that is being done uh, at the Joint Tax Board. I'll let the Secretary also 
mention one or two things about it, but we're nearly at the completion stage of making sure that you have a respectable tax client card that can be used also as an ID card and other other things that you may find you it's useful for. Thank you. They are giving a lot of very, very long effort. Now he is chairman of two items. Yeah. I will now go to the his first chairmanship, Federal Board of Finland Revenue. The, after that we come to the Joint Tax Board. Their job is simple. Give us your name. I ask them to stand here for a long time so you can take their photograph. <laughs> In case they, they, their phones cannot be reached, you know who, how to report them, okay? So they will give you their phone numbers and the position they hold. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We're sorry to keep you open. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Paramade Ogunsonya. I'm the Director of Efficiency Unit in the Office of the Executive Chairman, FIRS. Uh, the Efficiency Unit has two telephone numbers. They are 090... I will, I will give my partner number, don't worry. I want to give you as many numbers as possible so that if one fails, you try another one. But if one my personal number falls, I'll do that. My personal number is 080-33-236244. Did you get that? I'll ask again. 0803-323-6244. For efficiency units, 0... 907-032-6705. The second one is 0907-032-6709. You can also reach us on our email at efficiency at firs.gov.ng. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Wale Shoneko. I'm the essay on ICTs to the Executive Chairman FIRS. My telephone number is 0806-403-6557. 0806-403-6557. My email address is wale.shoneko at FIRS. Thank you very much. They are too fast. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I give that last one again. Which one? Please, you find, find out from the other person who recorded it. Thank you. Uh, give them a round of applause. This is for reduce the burden on the, the, the chairman because he has assistance who will be of help to you. Now, gentlemen, you can go back to your seat. I'm very, very grateful. Give them another round of applause. Internal revenue represented here by the executive secretary. Okay, please talk to us. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and distinguished delegates to this conference. Uh, my name is Hussaini Ilama, MNI FDA. My phone number is 0805 700. Four zero 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 eight five seven hundred four thousand. I I stand here to represent the chairman of the various state internal revenue service, and of course our chairman himself is here. The chairman of federal revenue is also the chairman of ATP, and I believe that. Some of the chairmen of the revenue service are here present. They are also members of ICON. I guess you all know the chairman of the State Department Revenue Service. Uh, I have is here. He's where is right he? in front. Come, where are you? He's right there. Come here. And uh, so, <laughs> we are taking note of all your questions and observations. 
And uh, the good news is that uh, both the chairman of the Joint House Board and myself have operated as chairman of revenue, as state revenue board, so we know various concerns, the various concerns of the members here. And the good news is that when the chairman came on board, chairman of JCB, he started with some reforms. One major area of that reform is collaboration among the various staff authorities. And that is to ensure that we provide a seamless processes for handling tax matters so that we don't have conflicts and create disharmony in tax practices. And in doing this, one major area that I want to respond is the area of concern raised by one of the going of our country, country suppression in the area of tax audit. As part of that collaboration effort, the state revenue services and the federal revenue service are collaborating to carry out joint tax audit. What that means is that you have a team of tax administrators and in some cases consultants, services provided by most members of this state institute. This team a taxpayer premises as a one-stop shop so that you don't have various tax authority coming at various times, which means you are able to provide the commission in one spot available to all tax authorities, federal and state authorities. And that is commencing very soon. Thank you very much. I wish to thank the chairman of Lagos State Internal Revenue. Thank you very much. I ask you to come here so you will see the difference in age between the man who was there before, this gentleman on my right, and this one. So this one, I mean, when he was there, maybe this was analog. This one is digital. Thank you very much. Now we have to be, I know that message has come to me that we overrun our time. What I said today is that this is very important to us. It's not every time we have these, these important people um, who we talk about and sometimes are angry with standing in front of us in the limelight. So I just said, uh, Mr. President, please forgive us for this. We can forgo our lunch for this. Now, I will now call on, first of all, I will call on uh, Chief Mr. Uh, uh, quickly. Yes, you want to respond to anything? Thank you very much. Right, uh, let me have it. No, it's okay. The uh, auditor has said that why it was important was because there's too much sensationalism on the pages of newspaper, especially when it comes to Asso Rock, that there's misinformation. But given the quality of the people here today, that's why he insisted on coming to talk. He normally does not like talking in public like this, but the quality that we have here made him come. Please, thank you very much, Mr. General. Now, yes. Thank you, sir. So I'll just make two quick uh, points. Um, the first one is on the point around equity and equality. I like the slide about those guys trying to work the football man. So I think it's important to emphasize that if you're talking about tax justice, we need to bear in mind that equity is not treating all taxpayers equally. It is treating equal taxpayers equally under equal and similar circumstances. So a lot of the things we do in Nigeria, for example, we don't have threshold for VAT. So if you are selling cola nuts and coconut and peanuts, and you make only 1,000 naira a month, you're supposed to register for VAT. FRS says there's no face VAT, file new return. That does not help the system, and I need, it needs to be addressed. We need to build trust in the system. Um, I was speaking to a CEO who says whenever they calculate their taxes, they ask the CFO to remit only 75 and keep 25%. And I said, why? He said, in the past, when the audit said in, they made his life to be a nightmare. They said he must find something. So he's keeping his 25 so that when they come, they can find something to play and let him be in peace. He doesn't mind paying the penalty and interest. The last one I want to make is people who preside over taxpayers' money must themselves pay the right amount, amount of tax and on time. We are in election season now. We all, including tax authorities and those of us who are taxpayers, must insist that lawmakers, 
who even wants to be governor, who wants to be president, vice president, and all of that, must pay the right amount of tax at the right time. And I'm sure that if you do that, you actually screen out a lot of indecent people because you need to be decent to take tax and pay it on time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And um, like we said, we have come to the end of this tax session. We could not have it, we could not have had it any better. We had everybody here, and anybody who is accountable has been brought out here to answer questions and uh, present themselves. But what is left now is the joint tax board. Go to the state internal revenue. Please, the letter you write to the state internal revenue because it's emanating from here. You copy the president of this club, Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. So you would know that this effort was not in vain. Mr. President, am I speaking for you? Thank you very much, Mr. President. On that note, we bring this to a close. I'm very, very grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Um, we will increase the tax this man will take from you if the applause is not loud enough. We have really taxed them now. Uh, where well, they were supposed to leave here by 10.30. It's almost 11.30 or more. Because it's amazing that they have paid the tax with smiles on their faces. We thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to quickly welcome the president of the institute to please step forward here for the group photograph. And, and the president of... Uh, Mr. President, you want the President of IFAC to also follow you. Please join. So let me welcome the immediate past President, my love is my love. Mohammedu Zakari MNI SCA to please step forward and present the flag for these people. Well, that is being presented to Mr. Vatude Paola, very chairman of the Federal Land Revenue Service, chairman of the Joint Tax Board, chairman of African Tax Administrators Forum. And it's also being used globally as a vice chairman, United Nations Committee of Experts on International Cooperation and Tax Matters. An amazing, amazing professional. As somebody said, a man who is not a lawyer and an accountant for changing the face of tax globally. <laughs> 